Hey everybody, this is Scott, the CEO of Git Butler. Today I'm gonna to go through some of the cool features of Git Butler and give you just a general overview of what this Git client can do. So I have an example project here. I have a little Twitter clone or X clone, I call it Y. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some edits that I've already made and we're gonna go through and look at how to create commits, how to create branches, how to create parallel branches, how to create stacked branches. If I edit some files, what you're gonna see is something similar to like a Git status output of saying, these are the files that are now modified, uh, in your working directory, what do you want to do with them? How do you want to commit them? Um, so here we can inspect them. I can look into my application CSS, my sidebar, my index, right? There's a couple of small changes that I've made here. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to create a new branch and commit these changes to that branch. Now, there's a couple different ways that I can do this. I can just hit this commit to new branch or I can explicitly create a new branch here. Um, and I'm going to make an independent branch um, rather than a dependent branch. We'll get to stacking in a second. So you give it a name, you create the branch, and now there's a couple different things you can do. You can just commit some stuff, right? So I can just commit this application.css file um, by either dragging it into the lane and creating a commit, or I can actually start a commit from here. You can either do a smaller commit message in this smaller thing, or you can sort of expand it out and do a nice long commit message here. Um, let's keep this somewhat simple. And now the other thing I can do is I can decide what goes in this commit. So I have three uh, files on the side here. I can not only say I don't want this particular file, I can also go into a file and say I only want these specific lines, right? Um, but for now, let's just actually commit all of the changes in this. Um, or actually, let's do two different commits. So I don't want to do the sidebar stuff in this one. So I'll do front end fixes and then I'll do another commit, sidebar fixes. And now I have two commits in this new branch. I'm a little lazy, so I'm gonna use Claude code to actually do this work for me. I'm gonna change the theme from blue to red, and then we'll see about adding a new separate branch that just has that separate from my front end fixes. That looks like that's done. So this is what the website looked like before, kind of a little Twitter thing. If I apply those changes, now I have a nice sort of red theme to everything, and my front end changes here are done. And you can see this, actually, these are independent branches. So if I say unapply the front end fixes stack, it's still red, but I, I sort of have this. This is what I did here. Um, and I can put that back in. And now that's, that's gone. Or same thing, I can unapply the red color theme and now it's not red anymore. So let's put that back in. Now we have two different branches. Now, the cool thing about this is that if I, for example, push this to GitHub, these changes are separated from each other, but they're both applied at the same time, right? So it's just like Git branches, except you can have more than one of them that you're working on simultaneously. So if I go in and say, continue to work on something in this sidebar, then I'll see it here, right? And I can do a bunch of different things. I can drag it into this and actually amend this commit if I'd like to. I could also commit it as a new commit on that branch. So now we have these two branches that are in parallel. Let's look at a different way that we could do this. What we could have done instead is let's say that the red theme depends on changes that we had done in the front end, right? And so I really want to merge the front end stuff before I actually look at merging the red stuff or merge them all together. Um, so let's undo this commit, we'll uncommit it, um, and we'll do it as a stacked branch instead. So we'll uncommit it, unapply the stack, now what we'll do is we'll add a new dependent branch here. So you hit the create a new branch, you add a dependent branch. The other thing you can do is this, you can say create a dependent branch here and add the stack front end fixes. And let's say SC red theme. And now you can see that these, these branches are stacked. And so I can take this and I can commit it to this one. So now if you have these stacked branches, you can push it to GitHub, right? It's very easy to, to sort of push these. Um, if you have the GitHub integration set up, you can also create a pull request. And so if I create a pull request that's called, say, red theme here, but this is a stacked branch, what it will do is it will inject a footer into the PR description that says this branch is actually dependent on another branch that it targets. Um, and you, you're gonna have to either merge them all together or merge the front end fixes before the red theme. But it's a very nice way of doing these sort of stacked branches. So if I look at this PR now, it links to both of these in a stack. So this is part two in a stack, and this is part one of a stack, and they depend on, on each other. Now, the other thing that's cool about this is that you can do what's called assigning to branches. So in this case, I have two lanes. Um, I have three branches, two of them are stacked. One of them is independent. When I start making changes, what I can do is I can assign 
uh, hunks, uh, I can assign changes to a particular branch and keep working on it. So it's sort of like each lane has its own independent staging area. So if you'd run git add and sort of stage changes in git, this is similar to that except you can have multiple independent staging areas. Um, so let's try that. I'm going to add a new feature where I add something to the admin page, a little sort of section. I'm going to put it in its own branch. Again, in the same working directory, in a new branch um, that's not stacked, it's an independent thing, and I can open up a PR that is just those changes. Okay, so this is the admin dashboard before. I've made some changes, done some recent signups in here. I have these two uh, changes here. And so what I want to do is I want to assign them to this lane. And then if I go in and make more changes, uh, it will either put it in unassigned if it can't figure it out. If it's within the same hunks, then it will automatically kind of keep it in the assigned lane. So let's make some changes to the, the admin controller here. Just a dumb comment, but let's see what it does. So we can see that since the admin controller was already assigned to this lane, I don't actually have to keep staging it. It says, you know what, actually this is part of that change as well, um, and it puts it in that. So let's go ahead and create a new commit on this. Uh, I'm going to start the commit. Again, I, I can also expand this and do a really nice commit message. I can also use AI to sort of generate commit messages if you want sort of a starting point, and you can go in and edit this. Um, it'll look at sort of the differences that you've made and give you at least a starting point. Okay, so now we have a commit here in the new signups admin page. We have this sort of stacked branch over on the side here. And again, I can push and create a PR off of this independently. And if I do that, actually, and I go check out this PR, what we'll see is that even though all of these changes are, are in my working directory at the same time, it has separated them into different, into different branches. And so what I can do is I can go in and see just this admin thing. It's clearly only edited the admin, admin pages and kept that in its own branch and its own commit. Um, and it isn't sort of connected with all of the other work that's in my working directory. Those are kept in separate branches. So that's the nice thing about working with parallel branches and with uh, sort of stacked branches in Git Butler. All right, so there's a lot of things that we can do that would be quite difficult in normal Git. Um, and so I'll show you a couple of these. Um, for one thing, we can move commits from branch to branch. So if I wanted to take this, this new signups commit and move it into the red theme commit, I can just drag it and drop it, and then I can go ahead and get rid of this stack. Um, and now my commit's over here. If I want to squash, uh, commits together, I can just take this and I can drag it not only to the one below it, but to any other commit sort of in the stack. So I can take this admin thing and I can take it down and, and uh, put it into sidebar fixes, or I can even move it, right? So I can move it farther down the stack, um, or I can squash it into another commit. And now you can see this admin stuff is also in the sidebar fixes. Um, we can also do the opposite. We can split up a commit. And the way that we do that is we add in an empty commit and then we move changes into that commit. So if I do this, I can add an empty commit anywhere in this stack, in this case below. Um, I can write the commit message now or I can move files into it first. Let's go ahead and look at all these files. So we have the admin controller and the sidebar thing. Let's just take this admin index uh, and drag it into this middle one, right? And so now this commit only has this admin index. The sidebar fixes still have the other, the other files in here admin controller and sidebar. Um, I can also move just hunks around. So now this one has part of the sidebar fixes and this one has the other part of the sidebar fixes. And now if I want to, after the fact, I can change the commit message. This brings up another thing, which is editing commit messages is very easy, right? Other than just sort of moving the order of them or squashing them together or splitting them apart, I can go back and say, you know what? Actually, I want to change this to part two. And it will rebase all of the commits on top of that. So the other interesting thing we can do is edit commits in place, right? And there's a couple of different ways that we can do this um, really quickly. Say somebody is giving me some feedback and say, instead of margin top zero, I want it to be margin top 10 pixels or something, right? And so now, how do we edit a commit that's not only four commits back, but in another stack, right? And it turns out with Git Butler, this is very, very easy. So let's go in and actually make this change. Okay, so it's here. So let's change this to 10 pixels. Inline CSS is the best. So this is the change that I made here. Um, it is locked because we're editing a hunk that's already been edited, so it has to go into this branch somewhere. Um, we couldn't put it in sort of a separate uh, parallel branch, so that's, that's how we know that. But how do we do that? So the easiest way is to just kind of take this file and we can drag it into this commit, right? And so now if we look at this commit, 
we have that 10 pixels in there. We've modified that, we've rebased the rest of the, of the commits on top of that. The other way we can do it, of course, that we've already kind of seen is we can commit this into a temp commit and then we can just squash this into this one, right? So that essentially does the same thing if we go in and we look, again, the margin is 10 pixels now. And the last interesting way that we can do this is by called edit mode. Let's pretend that we hadn't done anything here. We still have this, uh, this zero pixels. We wanna edit this. What we can do is we can go into the actual commit here and we can say edit commit. And if you do edit commit, what it does is something interesting. It's kind of like Git doing a, a detached head checkout, if you've ever done that. It essentially checks out this commit at that state. You can edit it however you want to, and then when you exit that state, it'll rebase everything else on top of it again. We'll go in, we'll make our change again. It sees that it's modified, right? You've changed this file, and we save and exit. And now, again, it rebases everything else. We can look at this, and our change is stored there. So you can directly edit a commit, you can make the change and amend the commit. You can make the change, do a commit, and squash the commits. There's lots of different ways that you can manipulate sort of the changes that you have in Git Butler commits. And the last thing that I'm going to show you is this thing called operations history. So this is something that is very, very hard to do in Git if you've ever done sort of ref log stuff. Um, I, I feel like everybody's a little bit afraid of this. But everything that you do in Git Butler is stored in an operations log and you can go in, look at your timeline and go back to any point of time in the past. So it's this button over here. We can see our operations history over here, sort of all the, the different things that we've done during the session. Um, and I can go back in time to absolutely any point, right? So if I wanted to go back before sort of I was starting to do this, this 10 pixels thing, I could come back here and I can look at this and I can see, okay, so here's the change that I had done then right, before I had done any of that. Or I can even go back to sort of the very beginning of this session that, that we had, right? What it doesn't undo is sort of what was pushed to GitHub. So here I can see these commits that were pushed to GitHub, they're, they're listed as upstream commits, but I'm going back to before I had committed absolutely anything, right? And I can actually get rid of this branch if I want, and I can start over from scratch. But it doesn't really matter what you do, even that, I, even that undo, I can undo, right? So if I come over here and I revert the revert snapshot, then we're back to kind of where we were, right? We can, we can always go back in time to any, to any point. So it's kind of nice. You never really have to be afraid of any of these, these actions. If you get into a weird state or you just know you wanna go back to what it looked like 10 minutes ago, it's very easy to open up the timeline, go back, hit revert, and you're there. Okay, so that's a quick overview of Git Butler. Rebaser commit editor, parallel branches, you can do stack branches all very easily without any other tooling. So go ahead and download it, tell us in Discord what you think, and enjoy.